Hey guys, Jake here with High Voltage Custom again. I wanted to show you uh, some of the side folding options I use for some of these builds. This is the Law Tactical side folding adapter. If some of you haven't seen it, it's a really nice product. They do a good job. Uh, really well built. I've already attached this one on here, so how you do that is you would um, take this spring retainer apart back here, which retains the button that holds in your bolt carrier group. Uh, when you fold it and then what you would do is use this wrench and you put it on the retaining nut in there and you would tighten that until the wrench bends so you can see how that's bent um, I always put a piece of tape on there to keep it from marring up the finish and I use scotch tape for a lot of that stuff if you're ever worried about it scratching something while you're installing it one option on this is you can go with your traditional buffer system um, and you know that would just retain like a normal AR15 receiver extension but some people are getting away from this because it's it's kind of loud when you're shooting suppressed and this is going to be a 300 blackout which is going to be suppressed so once you suppress a firearm you start to notice the the twang sound of the spring rubbing inside the buffer or buffer tuber receiver extension you start to hear it um, so if you want to get away from that, make the, you know, the firearm cycle smoother, sound better when you're shooting suppressed because you can pick up all them sounds that you normally wouldn't hear. Um, this is something you can get. You can get these silent capture spring systems from JP Enterprise. Uh, the, the problem with this that you would have with a law system, a traditional JP Enterprise silent capture, the moment you put it in here, and you fold this receiver extension together. Um, the reason this doesn't work so good is because when you add this law in here, you add length. So when you use your bolt carrier group, you're gonna have to add an extension. This is a normal extension that comes with the law side folding adapter. Um, it's solid, it doesn't, it, it works for a traditional buffer. So in, in this scenario, this would, you know, once you would side, side fold this, it would connect and then this would push on your on your buffer so that works great for that but if, if you don't if you want to go with something a little nicer like I said not making as much noise you would go with this so JP Enterprises and law teamed up and they got the side folding adapter kit here so it's a little bit more money but it comes with this nice um, extension for your bulk area group and it's hollow so what that allows when you're, you know, when you, when you fold this one over, it connects up. So it's sitting in here when this thing fires, this rod travels through and then allows the system to operate. So you need this if you're gonna run a law tactical side folder and you wanna run this type of spring or buffer setup. Works really well. Um, the other thing it comes with is a nice retainer for, for the uh, JP silent capture spring. Usually when you put these, these in a rifle, um, this type of buffer retainer, it's a small pin. And usually what you do is you just take them out and get rid of them. And then if you were to split your upper from your lower, the, the buffer system just kind of falls out. So you kind of got to be careful of that. Uh, you could keep it in there, but the problem is when you want to take this out and you push this down, it seems to catch on every one of these counterweights here and it, it ends up being really tough to get this thing out of the receiver extension. So another thing they did because you have to have a retainer for the side folder because if you side folded it and there was nothing there this would just fall right out of the gun. So you have to have a retainer so they created a, a new retainer that is kind of has a ramp on it and is wider so it, it doesn't catch on all those separations between the um, between the counterweights and everything so how you do that is you would insert this and you'd have to insert the ramp of this I don't know if you guys can see that the ramp of this toward the buffer system so it still goes together kind of like a you know the traditional buffer retainer right there and you gotta push this in here and these are always fun um, and once you get that, then you would screw in your receiver extension. 
Um, the law has a QD attachment for a sling right here. I always seem I add a QD plate usually to the back. Some people like plugging in their slings here. Some people like still plugging them in toward the back. You may have a um, stock or something or a brace like we're going to put on here. We're going to put the, the SBA3 on here. So that's got a QD there. Also, I like putting QDs all over the place because um, it's for customers. I don't know how they exactly want to set it up, so I give them a whole bunch of QDs so that they can choose how they want to carry the firearm if they're running a sling or something like that. Uh, so again, you're going to push this retainer down. Make sure it, this one you kind of have to line up. You know, the, the old one is just a pin, so no big deal there. But with this one, you actually got to make sure that that ramp goes toward the buffer system. So once you have it retained in there, then you would, you know, just like any normal installation, you'd put your, um, your back plate there, and then you would run up your castle nut to retain this whole system. So once, once we have that, then we can close this thing, and then we would tighten this up with our, with our wrench. Uh, a lot of times what I do, I use, like I was just telling you, scotch tape. These things will get marred up and scratched up. Um, so I usually put some scotch tape over that to keep it from getting all, you know. I do a lot of Cerakoting and I don't like scratching things because I spent hours and hours, sometimes days, on some of these finishes. And it's just not worth messing it up. And I want the customer to have a you know, decent looking gun that's not all scratched up. I'll let them put the scratches on it themselves. So, so yeah, I usually put that tape on there. It seems to keep it from... You know, scratching up the buffer tube or the receiver extension and then keeps the castle nut looking pretty good. So um, then what I would do is put this on here. It does cut through the tape a little bit, but it, you know, keeps the teeth of the castle nut wrench engaged and keeps it from scratching that up. You can torque these to military spec. I usually just get it till I start seeing that receiver flexing because I don't want to bend anything in there. Um, and that's usually plenty tight there and then I just pull this off you know once you pull pull the tape off it ends up looking pretty good there are no scratches or anything like that um then what I would do is you know pin that or peen it so uh, it, the castle nut won't back off so I usually use a center punch and just you know pound in a spot there and then I take some bluing and blew that steel a little bit and then put some oil on it so yeah that's where we would be there um you know one thing with with these systems if you're going to use a brace you got to remember you're adding length here and i know it's a kind of stupid arbitrary rule that the atf came up with but from the face of the trigger to the end of your stock or your brace actually the end of your brace extended it can't be any more than 13 and a half inches so so if I were to, we can put this on here and take a look quick. If I put this on here and I extend this all the way out to the last setting, um, sometimes you get lucky, most times you don't, especially. But So I'm sitting at like um, 14 and a quarter. So we would have to add something to this to keep it from going further back. Um, what you can use is SB Tactical makes these little plugs here. And they just fit right you know in the bottom here and they actually just plug a hole you know where where you may want your um where you would want that to come back so you can put, I put that in the last notch there i could slide this back on here run it back so it plugs that one hole so i can't push it back as far as it'll allow and then i'm sitting right at 13 and a half now so that, you know, usually just takes one of them plugs and then you're good to go. So if you're out on the range or anything like that and worried, um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't do it, but uh, I'm a manufacturer, so I gotta abide by the rules and put out things that are up to par. So um, so once you got that, you know, then you can put your system, your buffer system in here and it retains really nice. And um, the thing with that is you wanna make sure that when you push it in, uh, one thing you can do is, I'm just going to pop this out here real quick. Um, 
So when I, when I push that in, I want to make sure that I have to actually compress the spring just a little bit and, and it actually pushes up against that retainer. Then you know you have it set to the proper distance. So if it's, you know, if you can take this and move it around and that system's, you know, sliding around in there, it's not a good deal. You got too much play in there. So this one turned out good, just, just perfect. But if I had some slop in there and I have had that, maybe the receiver extension is just slightly, slightly long, this receiver extension, maybe the machine did a little too long or something like that. You'll have variations in them. You just put these shims in there. They send you these shims and, and uh, you can add, you know, you actually push in the buffer system forward a little bit so that there is some retention on that. Um, so yeah, once, you know, once you pull, rotate this in, your bolt carrier would have this extension and that actually um, sits, you know, and is retained in this area here. So once you would rotate this in, you guys can kind of see how this, you know, actually it would be retained in all the way, but I just kind of wanted to show you. It pushes that retention system out of the way and then it, then everything lines up. So when you're when your bulk carrier group is functioning it's you know it's allowing that rod to go back actually inside that through this hole and inside your bulk carrier group and it allows everything to operate properly so so yeah um really cool system works really well it's uh works really well suppressed uh one thing you guys might want to do they come with a certain spring in them uh the black spring which is kind of a standard ar-15 spring um I had I I usually order up a whole bag of these when I'm because a, a lot of people building this type of setup has a side folder brace. It's usually a short barrel because you know you're building a pistol, and usually if you're running a short barrel in an AR-15, a lot of people are building 300 blackouts because they seem to run they run really well in short barrels. They run really well suppressed. Um, it was just designed for that. So you know using this spring this is the white spring this is actually their their lightweight spring you can order the uh, spring kit from jp enterprise and it comes with quite a few different springs with different tensions this is the one i usually use for 300 blackout and it seems to operate really well um, it, it allows the bolt to lock back uh, if you're running that black spring and you're shooting subsonics and i usually i run a lot of oss suppressors because they just function really well um, that OSS has so little blowback and so little back pressure that it'll actually, under suppressed, it won't lock the bolt back. It won't have enough oomph to push the whole buffer system back far enough um, to engage the bolt catch here. And you'll have where on the last round it doesn't lock the bolt back when you're shooting suppressed. It's really weird. Um, so I started using these white springs. And then even when they're suppressed and you're shooting subsonic ammo, it's, it's got enough power to overcome the spring tension to lock the bolt back. So, um, yeah, if you guys got any questions, DM me, email me. Um, I got my phone number on Facebook, too. You guys can get a hold of that, call or text. Um, but, yeah, I run a lot of these. They work really well. works really well with the SBA3. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you guys real quick, um, these get pretty bent around on the SBA3 because they're just really loose rubber. Um, factor makes these they call them the stiffy and it's just a little it's just a little plastic retention deal and you just you know basically put it inside there and strap it down and that makes that all nice and rigid so so if you don't want this getting bent up you know when it's in the when it's in the safe and everything they, they tend to like when you throw them in a case or throw them in a safe and these these end up all bent and goofy looking um, this thing seems to work really well it's about 25 bucks on factor so check them out uh, really cool system uh yeah i i love these side folders for the short barreled builds make a great truck gun backpack gun if you guys are thinking of needing that for any reason or you know they're just fun they're just fun to lock everything back make it nice and uh, compact and they turn out really great so look for this build i'll be having this on the on the uh, site pretty soon and um, call me up you know these are my lowers now that we're making and you know we can do any kind of build you want this one's going to have the uh, gibbs side side charger so it's going to be real nice these work really nice suppressed because they block off that rear rear end of the receiver and 
um, kind of prevent them gases from coming out at you. This has also got the grid lock hand guard, really cool. Um, you just pull this lever here and you just slide this hand guard off. So if you need to make, you know, if you got an adjustable gas block or anything like that, or maybe you just like keeping your barrel clean and keeping it lubed up, keeping it from getting rusted if, if you got, you know, a steel barrel or something like that. Um, really nice, you just slide them back on, line up your rail, you know, and then once you get that rail timed however you want it, then you just push it in um, and then just lock it in there. And that's nice and rigid, so I don't have the barrel on this one yet. But this one works with key mod in these slots or M-lock, it'll work with both. Uh, it also has a front sight built in, so if you want backup irons, they're right there. And uh, yeah, just an awesome system. So this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be going together on here. It's gonna be a really nice, really nice looking build. So yep, hit us up if you got questions. Um, hopefully that helps some of you guys out with knowing how to do this and yeah, good luck on your builds. See you later.